So here I am. I'm all primed up and ready to go. It has been a doozy of a morning and I will get into that when I start my conversation. But uh, I'm just going to do like a get ready with me. I do have a couple of new products that I want to share with you that I've been using for a little bit and really loving. Well, not a couple of products. I actually have one product that I've been using that's brand new that I really have been liking. But I do want to touch base on this e.l.f. gripping primer again. It works fabulously if you live in a humid climate and you prefer to wear cream makeup it really does help and little trick I have been applying a pore primer to the t-zone area where I have some pore issues and allowing that to dry for just a few seconds and then going right in over it with the gripping primer because most of us will wear off here and through the t-zone anywhere that oil is a possibility for me it's only a possibility because I'm dry as a prune. All right, so I primed my eyelids, primed my uh, pores, and I primed my whole face. Everything will be listed and linked below because I may not say what I am using, but just open show more and everything will be linked below for you. Okay. And my doodles are here with me and it seems that so many of you truly enjoy seeing them behind me. I cannot control what they will do while I'm recording. Okay. All right. So we're going to get started. At first, I want to tell you, I had a doozy of a morning. Uh, I had my first ocular migraine and it was really scary. I was getting our breakfast. We had gone to the gym. I had no problems at all nothing. And then I came home and I started to make our breakfast and I was fine. I went over to make Lou a cup of coffee and it was almost as if it was like, you know how you have those, um, they're like when they want to go kaboom or kabang in, in the cartoons and they have that etched line and it almost looks like a, a star, but it's got a lot of jagged edges. That is what appeared in my vision and it looked like it had a heat wave around it. And I was kind of scared because it's never happened to me before. So right away, Lou came out and I told him what I was experiencing. And because he's not an eye doctor, <laughs> he's a urologist. So he deals with part of the brain. <laughs> if you know, you know. Okay. So, um, he looked it up and he said, you're having an, um, uh, an ocular migraine. And he said that when the first one you have can cause a lot of anxiety, don't worry. They only last for a little while, sometimes only minutes and sometimes for, you know, a half an hour or so. And of course mine lasted for half an hour. I felt no pain. I just was seeing a huge heat wave. Like when I would look at Lou, I could see through the center of him, but I could not see anything else because it was just like, you know how you look on a steamy hot road and the sun is shining, you see that haze, like that heat wave that's bouncing off the road. Well, that's what I was seeing with my eye. And, uh, he said, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's actually common in people who have vertigo, which I, uh, have never had one before. So this was my first one and it did last for a half an hour, but it was a little frightening. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I'm at the age, well, at any age we could have, you know, something go wrong, but I'm at the age where, you know, I could have a stroke or, you know, something. Uh, and, you know, remember I have a friend who had a brain bleed and, you know, I mean, those things all come to mind, especially when you're over 60. Uh, not that I dwell because I don't, I don't dwell on any illnesses or sicknesses. I live my life every single day because dwelling, I swear you can bring things on. So it did go away and I'm absolutely fine now. Uh, I have been having a lot of sinus issues, um, allergies. There's a lot of mold here in Florida, so I really do um, suffer a little bit. But anyway, here I am, all better. And But it was scary. Have any of you ever experienced an ocular migraine? And if you have, because it could happen to me over and over and over again, of course, I'm going to have an eye exam to make sure everything is okay because I also have macular age degeneration, but it was always diagnosed in this eye. And it seemed that the ocular migraine was happening here. And it, I guess it's like a little spasm 
um, around the eye nerves and that's what causes it. Anyway, if you are an eye doctor out there, um, please explain in the comments what's going on because if other people have had this, uh, it could really help them to understand it. Of course, no diagnosis is being made here. And if you do have something like I had and you don't have a doctor in the house, perhaps uh, you should call your eye doctor and just make sure that everything is okay. All right, so anyway. let's move on. Obviously, I put my foundation on and I, even though I said everything will be listed and linked below, I do want to mention this Wet n Wild uh, Photo Focus Foundation in the dewy finish. It is spectacular, my friends. It is a drugstore foundation that is as good as many high-end uh, glowing foundations. I find myself reaching for this one all the time. It truly is beautiful. So keep that in mind. And because some people just will not go below and read things, it's cream beige. All right. So now this, uh, Colleen Rothschild actually sent to me. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, I was not asked to talk about this or anything. She just sent the product to me and it is, let me get my zoom lens because it does seem that my vision is suffering just a little bit because I think I'm still at the tail end of the ocular migraine. Uh, this is the uh, Illuminating Tinted Eye Cream. Now I have used this all week. And I must say, I really love it. Now it does have a tint to it. Allow me to show you that tint. And it, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Let me just smear it out a little bit. It is a peach tone. It has a pinky peach tone to it, which is excellent for uh, camouflaging blueness or darkness. So I thought I would just show you how much this truly brightens. Now, some days my eyes are a little darker underneath than others. And a lot of it is if I don't get enough sleep. Puffy now, today because of allergies, but I still want to show you this. It this is, is what it says. Illuminating tinted eye cream helps reduce the look of dark circles and fine lines. This multitasking treatment delivers hydration, leaving eyes bright and well rested. And you apply under your eyes gently and just tap and blend into the skin. It really is beautiful and you don't need a lot. I'm just gonna put a little dot on my hand and I do use my fingers for this. It really, it's, all right, I want you to get a good look. I'm gonna do one eye and then we'll take a look, see, okay? So I'm just gonna, and I do have some darkness towards the inner part of my eye. And again, I only put a light touch of foundation under there, not a lot. And that was just to give me that extra little coverage. You can use concealer, I suppose, but I didn't want to. I'm trying to use less and less concealer because, you know, less is more when you get more wrinkles. So just going to dab this underneath the eye. It's really, really nice. It brightens. It also is a treatment, although I am using an eye cream underneath. And I just go along and tap, and then I'll tap it right up into the corner. I'm not dragging this, I'm just tapping it in, and it really does brighten. So there is one eye done and the other not. It's so subtle, but yet makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna take a little bit more because I'm dark right here. So I'll just brighten that whole area up. Now, if you have long fingernails, it's kind of hard to get into the corner there and you may need to use a sponge, but I like using my fingers for this. And I just tap it in. I'm not trying to tap it away. And I'm just going to brighten up the whole inner eye area. It really is beautiful. It's just a fabulous, fabulous highlighter. I love it. And I'm not using any concealer with it. This is all I'm doing. So I just wanted to share that with you. I will put the link below. This was not sponsored. I was not asked to do a video. I do I have a code for you with Colleen Rothschild. It will be underneath the video. So let's get on to the storytelling part. I, um, to be honest with you, sometimes I get a little bored with the content that is on YouTube. I get tired of just seeing um, makeup hauls. I get tired of just seeing, 
you know, the latest and greatest of whatever. I really enjoy watching when the people I like to watch tell stories or every now and then do something other than selling. Now, I understand YouTube is a business. We all make a little bit of money. Some people make more than others, and some people have quit their jobs, and this is their source of income. So I'm not casting shade on anyone. I'm just saying it gets a little old to me. Uh, so I like to see a little more, per I like to see a personal touch put into it. If you want to do a personal touch and sell kitchen gadgets while you're doing it, that's fine. You know, you want to sell a pair of shoes, that's fine. I mean, I'm actually going to show you uh, an outfit that I'm wearing today because I bought these shoes that I think are fabulous and they are oh so comfortable. And I know people are always looking for comfortable shoes. And because I have changed my size, I have needed to venture out and buy some new clothing and I found a casual, very casual pair of slacks that I think are great for summertime and springtime and I am all about comfort. Of course I want to look super fabulous but I am all about comfort my friends so I want to share a couple of those things. But with that being said, let's get on with today's video. I All thought right. I would do a little story time and I will change the names to protect the innocent. <laughs> so I um, thought I would just tell you about um, a high school love affair that thankfully was an unanswered prayer in my life. So let's go back to seventh grade. So here I am, sassy Tammy in seventh grade falling madly in lust. Notice I say lust, but at the time I thought I was madly in love. Now in high school I had a group of girlfriends who I adored and thought adored me. <laughs> How can you not adore crazy Miss Tammy? Anyway, there was this boy, Mike. He was the captain of our high school football team and I was in love with him, just madly in love with him. All of my friends knew it, and um, I just, there was nobody, nobody else for me. He was the boy I was going to marry, I was going to have children with, I was going to be the perfect wife. <laughs> all of those things. And remember now, when we were, when you were growing up in my time, getting married at 18, 19, 20 years old was normal. There was nothing wrong with it. That is what we did. We met a boy, we got married, we had children, but um, it never got to that stage for me, ever. <laughs> anyway, I used to talk about him endlessly with my girlfriends, endlessly. I also learned another thing that just because you call someone your girlfriend doesn't mean that they care or love you as much as you may them. So, um, and that I'll, I'll, you'll figure out when I finish the story. So I used to talk about him endlessly, endlessly. I mean, my family knew I liked him. Everyone knew that I liked him. Well, at that point, I was saying I loved him. There was just no doubt in my mind that I loved him. <laughs> and um, he knew I was alive. And we, you know, back then, dating was just like, you know, would you like to walk to the store with me and get some candy or something like that? That's what my dating routine was. Or maybe would you like to get something from the school cafeteria? And that was a date. And uh, we would do things like that every now and then. And I remember at one point taking a stroll in the park with him and I was just thinking, oh my goodness, he's in love with me as well. So this is going to be the perfect match made in heaven. And um, you know, I'm going to name my first child this, I'm going to, oh, this is what I'm going to wear on my wedding day. All the silly things we think about when we are young. So, uh, you know, this traveled on from seventh, eighth, and ninth grade because that was junior high school. So for junior high school back then, it was seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade. Mike was 
the focus of my heart. That was all there was to it. So as the years went on, it never really developed into anything, but I surely thought he was mine. <laughs> and nobody else was going to have him. <laughs> and I didn't know of him dating anyone else. And then one day, uh, it came to my attention that he was dating one of my best friends. And I was heartbroken at the betrayal of a friend going out with someone that I liked. And I was heartbroken that he was not going to be my boyfriend ever. And he was not going to be the husband I had made up in my head. <laughs> so obviously he was not for me. And obviously he was meant for her because they did get married and they did have children. However, through the grapevine, I have heard that her life is not wonderful because uh, he, I believe, is an alcoholic. He's a very successful man, but he is an alcoholic. I don't even know if he's still living. I haven't heard about them in years, but at one point I did hear about him and that that was something that he suffered from. And uh, I mean, he may be recovered now. I don't know anything about him because I just, it's not, it's just not part of my life. So um, that just goes to show you that you can pray for something that may not happen because it's not meant to happen. It's just like that Garth Brooks song, which I love. And is, if that prayer had been answered, perhaps it would not have been a successful marriage and it would have changed my journey along the way and I would not have ended up where I am today or have been or be the person that I am today. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I am grateful for unanswered prayers and I have several other unanswered prayers in my life. And some things I can remember praying and praying. It was my biggest prayer at night was to please bring me someone to spend my life with. And I remember my niece, it was Christmas, uh, she gave me a Ken, she was young at the time, and they were Christmas shopping, and she said to her mother, I want to get this Ken doll for Aunt Tammy so she's not alone. And she gave me a Ken doll <laughs> for Christmas, and it was just the sweetest thing ever because she did not want me to be without someone in my life. So Ken was there for a while. <laughs> I did not have a successful dating track. I did not date a lot. I was not asked out a lot. So I was not really taken out on a lot of dates. I was set up on a, con a couple of blind dates and they were awful, just awful. And, um, you know, I dated a couple of people, some, some for a couple of years, some for a couple of months. I am a firm believer when someone shows you who they are, you must believe them. You must. And if you choose not to, it can bring so much sadness and sorrow to your life because we cannot change people. We just cannot. People can only change if they want to. So if you meet someone and there are things about him or her that you just don't care for, but you think to yourself, well, I'll work on that and I can change that. It's not going to happen. You have to accept the person you choose to spend your life with. You have to accept the good, bad, and the ugly. I do not think in any situation you should accept abuse, and that is in the form of alcohol, drugs, or physical abuse. If they abuse your children, that is another thing that, you know, I don't know how one could handle that. But people do a lot of things out of fear. So I do believe that when someone shows you who they are, although a narcissist is very good at camouflaging who they really are. So a narcissist may still be able to fool you. But I do believe that people eventually show you who they are. And when they do, you have to really pay attention and you know, make a decision what you're going to do in your own life. And I do believe the old saying, there is a lid for every pot, my friends. There is a lid 
for every pot. And that is why I always, I try to send a message to people, to friends who ask me about relationships. Never close your heart off because some enchanted evening may come your way and there they will be right in front of your eyes. But if you are closed down and not ready for it, then of course it's not going to happen. So for me, that unanswered prayer was the blessing in my life. It truly was. It brought me to Lou. And that's not to say that I didn't experience more heartache down the road, because I did. But I just said, whatever is meant to be is going to be. And it's not anything that I can control. It is out of my hands. I just have to keep my heart and eyes open so that when it does come my way, I'm not so bitter that I miss it. And I think that bitterness is something that happens. And for the record, I have been cheated on. I have been stood up. I have been played a fool, all kinds of things. But um, I refuse to allow it to close my heart off to uh, my true love. I know when you are down and out and you've been burned so badly, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but there is a light there, my friends, but you have to allow it to shine. If you don't, you are setting yourself up for loneliness because we cannot judge everybody by our past. If I had shut down and been closed off, I would have no love in my life. I would have no girlfriends. I would have no Lou. Um, you know, we have to learn forgiveness, yes. But I think people come and go in our lives. Um, some people are meant to be there forever, and other people are meant to be there only for a short while. And I'm sure there are many people that I have yet to meet and does that make losing them any less painful? No, no. Losing a good friend can be like a death in your family, uh, especially if you truly loved that friend. I've had those friends in my life that the loss of them was really, really difficult for me, but I knew that I would heal from it and, you know, I know that there will be more friends like that, hopefully, in my life. So many lessons can be learned by unanswered prayers. And when it comes to forgiveness, I think that so many people think that when you forgive someone, you're saying, it's okay what you did to me. That's not it at all in my eyes. The forgiveness allows me to heal and not turn bitter, for one. Because I think I when you hang on to um, hating someone, being so angry at someone, I, I think we are hurting ourselves in that situation. Oh my goodness, I had to stop for a moment. I, this finger locked in place and it just spasmed right through here. So it's been a doozy of a day, my friends. So I was talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is for yourself. It truly is. If you walk around with all that anger, that bitterness, that hatefulness, that's closing your heart down. That other person has gone on and is living their life. They're not thinking about you anymore. They, and if they're a narcissist, they're not even thinking they did anything wrong. It's all been your fault. I know that... It's very hard to say, I forgive you. And when you forgive someone, you have to let it go. You cannot hang on to it. You cannot throw it in their face every chance you get. You must let it go in order for yourself to heal, my friends. It's so true. And you really do need to accept within your heart that just because I'm saying the words, I forgive you, does not mean I have forgiven the actions that were against you. That's not what we're saying. I'm saying I forgive you so I can heal. Because truly, it is the only way you will heal. I watched my mother walk around with bitterness in her heart because she could not forgive. It was not a part of her character to forgive someone. But for me, anytime I have been hurt, I just forgive.
I truly do. And it doesn't make me a better person than anyone because I'm, it's, it's a selfish thing for me. I'm forgiving because I need to be able to continue to grow. So that's my little story time today, okay? Uh, I have to tell you, I'm really enjoying the Fifth Glow Beauty Lip Balms. Really nice. And this color is Alina. I think it's really, really pretty. And you know, you can take these and you can use it on the eyelid which I will just to show you. Again, it's a cream product, but it is really beautiful. Look at that. It's on this eye and not this eye. I did put some of the, I used the Fit Glow Beauty Clean Cream blushes today, and uh, I put the peach one down, and now I'm laying the Alina over it. It's really beautiful, just gorgeous. Look how pretty that is, just beautiful comment section if it's not too private and it's not too painful for you. I would love for you to share with me an unanswered prayer and also have you forgiven someone who has truly devastated you. And if you have, how did it help you heal? Just putting a dab of powder, I'm using a very loose brush here, and it's just the uh, Laura Mercier translucent powder. I am just touching it right here, and a little bit on the nose, a little bit here, and a little bit here. I did not put it anywhere else, not under my eyes, not over the rest of my face, just here where the T-zone has the habit of going crazy on us. But isn't that beautiful? Look how nice all of that looks. And that was using the Fit Glow Beauty Cream Blushes. I'll go ahead and show them to you. Uh, you get an assortment of colors. I hope this is still available. And I use the ELF Contour Palette, Cream Contour Palette, and very nice. I used the ELF Brow Lift instead of the Anastasia. For the glow on my cheeks, I did use the um, Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. And this is the Pillow Talk color. And my lips, I used a uh, Dior liner, which I'll have to, I think it's called Jungle something, not sure. And I'll put all my brushes below. And the balm is from Fit Glow Beauty, beautiful. I have a code for these. And I think that this Colleen Rothschild Illuminating Eye Tint is just beautiful underneath the eyes. Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel. Now I'm just gonna curl my lashes. And I'm using the Refer Eyelash Curler because it fans the eyelashes out beautifully. Now I'm going to go in with the, this is the House Lab. And this one here is, what color is this? This is Bronze Shimmer. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do this along the tight line, pushing up against the lashes. And I'll go on the inner eye. And this is just going to give a little bit of depth. I'll let you see it before I do the other eye. See the difference? Just gives that, it gives a sexier eye look, a little smolder to it. It's really in a little bit of definition, so you don't look tired. And now I'm gonna go in with my mascara. I'm using the Pat McGrath. This is just a really fabulous, fabulous. I'm just gonna lay it at the root and just blink down, holding it in place, just to really bulk up the root area. Do the same thing over here, and like I just hit it on, don't even bother with it yet. We'll do it at the end. And then I go through and just sweep it through. And that is just one coat of this mascara. It's really, really beautiful. It does cost a little bit more money. But if you have a special occasion and you really want your lashes just to shine, uh, you really get a good effect with this. But again, notice how I'm doing it. I'm holding it and then I'm blinking, but I'm not moving my hand at all. And I'm just building up towards the root lash line. And then I do the same thing on this side. And then I go through and I just sweep through just to get the ends. I like to build up my root first and then put the, cause I like a bulkier looking lash. Bulk, and you see how that is? That's just perfect. And that's pretty much my look for today. And I'm gonna stand up and show you this outfit. 
and the shoes. Now I'm going to start with the shoes and you'll see the color I have on when I stand up. I'm just letting this dry. So this is Ted time to dry so I'm just going to go in and only when it's dry you want to go in and just sweep it off with a spoolie. And now it's totally gone without smearing all over my eye. So if I have any more on the lid I just go over it with the spoolie and it scrapes it right off. And that is my look. Very natural today cream and because I use that gripping primer it's going to stay in place my friends. So let me just share with you this tank that I have on everyone says what tank are you wearing? These are from Target my friends. They are eight or nine dollars and they are from the company A New Day. They have a variety of color. I actually buy a few in each color so that because I just love them. I love the way they fit the arm, how they come up high. It's very flattering, very flattering. And I want to say this out loud, ladies, because I know a lot of women limit themselves to what they wear because they don't like their arms. I was one of those people, but I had come to I had made a decision that I was not going to not wear things I love because some other woman is going to look at me and think bad things about my arm because men do not think like that. Men do not look at women and say, whoo, look at the cellulite on her. I mean, maybe some bodybuilders, they might look at another woman and think that way because they like women who are into bodybuilding. But the majority of men are not going to be looking at us thinking, oh my goodness, look at the wrinkly skin on her arms or look at the big arms that woman has. They're just not. That's us. The bat the wings, wings, they're not looking at. They're not looking at that saying, oh my goodness, look at, she could just fly away if she wanted to. Now, I have been working on my arms for a long time, but I'm 63 years old. So I have skin that is all wrinkled and is there, but I refuse. I refuse to wear long sleeves just because I'm worried about what some other woman is going to think about my arms. So lady, celebrate that you are alive and wear whatever makes you feel good about yourself. If you don't feel good in short sleeves, then do it for you. But don't do it because other women might be looking at your arms saying things because they should just be minding their own beeswax. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that, okay? So I love these. Absolutely love them. I told you, I must have well over 50 of them. I love them, okay? All right, so, so next I want to show you some shoes that I purchased. Now, uh, these are for casual wear and they are for comfort, my friends. But when I'm looking for shoes that are comfortable, I also want them to be kind of cute. I don't want to wear what my family calls my pilgrim shoes all the time. Every time I would buy a pair of loafers or something, my family, my sisters especially, they'd be like, those look like pilgrim shoes. <laughs> but, you know, I march to my, the beat of my own drum, my friends. I truly do. All right, so I saw these shoes and I said, oh, I'm going to order them. And I love them. They are so comfortable and I think they're cute. You'll see when I stand up. But here is a pair in the coral color and they have a really nice sole. I don't like cork soles, but these have a really nice sole to them. They're very comfortable. There's a little padding, little cork, so it's, you know, it's got a little give to it and a nice rubber bottom for non-slip when you are on stone, especially marble and things like that. But these are just adorable. Now I did get these in a seven and they fit perfectly and I believe they come in three different colors. The coral is just fabulous and you'll see the color I have on in a minute. And this I bought, which is from the same company and this is BZ's and I believe these came in other colors and this is just more of a slip on. So nice, my friends. So nice, so comfortable. Uh, this has just a little bit of stretch, not a lot, so it's not gonna get super big on you and stretch out. Just really nice, and it, it has, has just, just enough stretch, so, it, so when you're walking, there's just enough stretch for it to be flexible for your foot. Beautiful. I love them, love them, love them, love them. If, I, if there were more colors, I would probably order more. And I also have several of the flat sneaker type shoe from BZ's. This is a great line for a little bit of style. I, I know there's people on YouTube and Instagram that would not be caught dead in these, 
but I think it's all in the way you carry yourself anyway. I don't necessarily think it's what you're wearing. Anyway, I, mean, I wanted to share the other colors that come in. Now I'm going to stand up and share this, uh, share the pants with you. Holding my microphone for just a minute. These are from White House Black Market, and they are the straight crop mid-rise pret a petty pants. And I got these in a size six. Let me see if I can get that to focus for you. Got to get my face out of the way. Hang on. There you go. So that is what the name of them are. And they came in a white, but the lady told me that they are getting several colors in these. And I'm waiting because I love these pants. They are comfortable, cute, lightweight, casual, and I just think they are fabulous. So I'm talk and I hope you can hear me. All right, so there's my golden doodle laying in my way, of course. But the shoes are the same as the coral shoes, but they are in a tan color, which I thought were perfect for these because they are more flesh tone, so they elongate my legs. And these pants, they have side pockets to them, but they have a back pocket that buttons with flaps. For me, I think that when you have pockets on the back and you're losing a little bit of volume in your bum bum, uh, the pockets make up for that. So I really think these are just fabulous. They have a little bit of a seam running down the front. They do have buttons on the side and they cup up just slightly. I imagine if they're too short for you, you can unbutton them and just let that cup down. But really, really comfortable. They're very, very lightweight. Let me look at the what they're made of, and I'll put that in an annotation. But I just think they are fabulous, and this is what they look like. Now, these are a little loose because I did try the four on, but I like a little bit of room in my thighs because my thighs are a little bit bigger, even though I've lost a lot of weight, my thighs are still a little bit bigger, and I've never been one to really enjoy things that hugged my thigh area. So I really like these. They're very, very comfortable. Again, I love the pockets in the back. They do have side pockets, which I usually don't like, but this is really, really nice. And they do, they have a, you know, a couple of little buttons here. So I did not buy these in the white because they were a little bit see-through. And they only had the four for me to try on. They didn't have the six. I like these so much that I may just invest in a bunch of nude underwear. Uh, so that I can get them in the white because I just really, really love them. They're very, very comfortable, my friends. All right, so that is it for today's video. Really loving the Colleen Rothschild Illuminating Tinted Eye Cream. It is fabulous. Loving my new slacks. Loving the e.l.f. Gripping Primer. Just, and I'm loving these Fit Glow Beauty Balms. Love them. Actually, I love my makeup today. And my earrings are from Team Davidson, and I just love them. They're like a half moon. I can't remember the collection name, but they're just perfect, absolutely perfect. And my hair, well, it's just doing its own thing today. <laughs> All right, my friends, so in the comments section, don't forget, I want to hear about your unanswered prayers and your chance at forgiveness. And before you head on out, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you as an ageless beauty, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Right next to it is the bell that lets you know of all the videos that I'm putting up. Until the next time, my friends, go out in the world, be lovable, and remember, it is okay to love your age. I love you all. Bisous.